previous stories reflect. I've been in this room. What would seem like days sitting in an uncomfortable chair, leaning over my desk. I try not to think about it. Try not to look in the corner of the hallway. Why had I not not closed the door? Too frightened even to get out of my chair, much less face the thing that was out there. So in my study, reading yesterday's paper for the fifteenth time at night, my eyes growing tired of reading the same thing over and over. Fire crackled behind me. A small fireplace appeared outside as the snow floated out down outside my window. It'd been snowing for days. It didn't look like it about to stop any time soon. I looked up briefly. I saw my tall, hunched over figure cast a shadow, dark shadow on the wall in front of me, focus on the paper in front of me. I started with a date on the page, first page again. January twenty second, eighteen seventeen, it read I ran my hand through my dark brown hair. I tried not to look at it, anything. But I saw the newspaper the next line was Cookton, London, England. No matter how hard I contrary the text of her lying in the hallway, tore through my thoughts like a knife, just like it had been night terrors, daydreams, anything but reality. Now look, but how was it conceivable? I know my uh, my life had been a fairly reasonable man, never believed things to be true unless it could be proven. To believe in such things, I say, would be nonsensical. Yet I cannot fo- think of any other explanation. Focus, John. How can you be no better? Hell, you're not a child. How can you be so foolish? But still, I dare not look behind me. I turn my attention again to the paper. English freighter drainer sinks off Malaysia. It will trouble me every time I read it. Whoever wrote it gave no specific details about the story. I mean, since they had only heard about what happened, don't bother to investigate further. The writer, I like to think that I always keep a story stimulating by providing a providing background to it. But even names of members of the ship were, but not even members sh- members of the ship were mentioned. Made his friends, these men were vexed, maybe even upset by the man who wrote this article. So I'm now or not mentioning who has survived and who has not. In the back of my mind, I felt something was staring at me. No, it couldn't be. It's possible not to, to even think of it. So why do I keep coming back to this wretched thought? Well, to turn my attention back to the news when my oil lamp abruptly went out. Darkness was absolute. The only sound came from the splashing rain and crashing thunder outside my unpredictable. Well, the oil turned out to the moment of this moment my palm began to sweat as I sat unable to move in the darkness. My biggest fear has always been an irrational fear. The darkness is nothing compared to the real dangers of the world. I could be afraid of spiders or heights or maybe drowning. Poor men on ship that sunk the day before. Maybe in such a sentence would be more and more frightening than that I was experiencing. Now I became because I put this history like theirs. I have a logical reason to be scared. I did not simply because I don't even know what I had been scared so, even if it was real, but it was to be. Reason, John, you think in terms of reason. You're not afraid of dark. You're afraid of what it is. You're not afraid of what the dark is because you cannot possibly be anything there. But you, but then, what did I see? Mind you, if it back to this early this evening, I returned on my trip to the bakery down the street, new loaf of bread, my small house here in London. Small brick house, fit for a pun person. It's full of really all I need. I don't have to be family to share anything with you. Shaking off the snow, I stepped in my door, I looked over my coat rack and sighed, for I could, could have worn my window coat that lay there now. I chose and chose a curl coat with drench. I laid my coat on the table and coach and went to change in my bedroom. And there's an object in the hallway, long and thin and wrapped in dark cloth. No sign, no, no, no sign as who had left it, which is strange. It could have been anyone. I never locked my door. I removed the cloth from the object of in the mirror. Framed with dark, dark iron, and quite old despite its beauty. The iron was choked in its Flowers around the edges and grooves ran along the sides. For a moment I stood there, taking the beauty of it. Then I looked into it. There's a, my tail, thin body, and my short brown eyes with colour marched, my short chestnut hair. I saw the stub on my chin and begin to grow into sight beard. 
and saw lines in my forehead and circles around my eyes and countless nights. I lack sleep. I noticed that was behind me. Down the hall was a dark figure in a shape that looked like a man's body. I found myself quickly around the room of a mirror towards the dark figure. But I looked, there was nothing to be found. I turned back to the mirror and I lost my breath. The figure was closer to me and it touched, and it almost touched me. I could see it better than before. No, so far I had not. It seemed to be composed entirely of black liquid, like smoke, and moved freely, but in the purpose. It in what looked like a hand and placed in my reflection shoulder. I cringed and looked at my shoulder, but nothing was there. I looked back and up, my figure was now leaning in my, towards my face, almost like whispering to me. Then my reflection started to move as I ran. I turned. Wait for the mirror, I ran down the hall as fast as my study. I've been here for what I imagine to be three hours now. Try not to think about it. My lamp was gone out. I sat here in fear. Finally got the courage to stand up and fumble around the room to find the second lamp. I had a table somewhere. My hands searched for what my eyes cannot see. I just find what I'm looking for. I bring the lamp back to my desk and carefully light it. It's a relief to not be swallowed by the darkness anymore. They had turned around, the grass was reality. I had it earlier today, it was now a thin, taut piece of thread. I just snapped in two, the mirror was resting on the far side of my study. I screamed, I threw myself against the wall and slid to the bottom. I lingered over the mirror on the wall across from me. I watched now the mirror slowly begin to tilt, till I could see myself in it. I watched as a dark phantom hand grasped my shoulder. I was in trance by my own reflection. All I could do was sit as I watched the black abomination cut my face, so I screened at my reflection to move. I watched the face make from the darkness itself whispered in my reflection ear. I gave in horror as my reflection stood up. Walked to, gla- walked to the window. I was in pain when it smashed the glass with its fist. I tried to hide my eyes when I so I'd pick up a broken glass, piece of mirror glass. I tried to look away when he forced me to stare in his eyes. I sensed his thoughts in my head. He said to me that he, if I, had, I was afraid to look, I didn't need to. Everything became tinted red when my reflection brought the jagged object across his eyelids. Yet there was no blood, not for him. He just smiled. He walked back over black omelet, over to black domination. He again drew him near and whispered into his ear, could see this looked like grimacing smile and shaped his face. Heard a phantom in the mirror, and in dark a sense of voice say it said, Life is obsolete and clings closest where it is most hated. I tried and desperately to bear. I saw a soul tear roll down my reflection face. I cried in pain. He dragged the glass took his glass into his throat.